All right, so what we see here is the repo sync command has completed successfully. So at the very end, after synchronizing the repository, it goes through and checks out those projects. And as it checks out those projects, that was when we see them start to populate here in our working folder. So that's all complete. Let's see the next step for using the Sopen, Sony Open Device Project on Android Open Source Project. So we've completed the repo sync and now we need to do the very next step which is the repo update shell. So this is completely different than what you normally would do when you're compiling uh, you know, Android Open Source Project or something of that nature. So I think it's good to show it here so we can see it in action. So we're here at the uh, at the terminal. Actually, I'll show the uh, file as well and what we're going to do and what it's going to run. Here's the repo update dot shell file, and again, this is not typical. This is specific to the Sony Open Device project. We're going to open that with a text editor. and we see the commands that are inside so essentially it's going to repo sync again and after it does that it's going to go through and choose specific things that it wants to grab it's going to uh, take things and apply commits from other references or to revert or go back on commits that have already been made and uh, it's going to put everything in order specifically for building the Sony Open Device project for whichever device that I choose. So in this case, we'll be building for the discovery. And this shell script is going to run regardless of which device you choose. I suppose that sounds like a misnomer, but but that uh, it's going to allow me when I do choose my device to have everything set up properly for that device. So again, the command here, very non-typical, is to run this shell script before you do the work. So we hit enter on that. And it's going to go through and start performing these actions. Now, since we repo synced already uh, as of yesterday, this portion of fetching projects should go rather quickly because it doesn't need to uh, add any more to the list. So as we can see already 68%, 78, 86, 95, 100% now it goes through and checking out those objects just like we had before. Also what helps in this case is since we chose a specific branch that is not the main branch, that specific branch may not really be actively being developed anymore. So the chance of things changing is a lot less than if we were to uh, have the main branch where action is happening all the time. So it's about halfway through checking out the projects. And I'd like to really show the part where it starts going through and reverting commits and uh, making changes and applying commits from outside references. A lot of commits that are going to be added or changed in here. But uh, the numerous commits is actually because the Sony Open Device Project covers numerous phones. So if it was uh, for just a specific phone, this list would be fairly short.
All right, it's done checking out those projects, and now it starts going through and doing these changes. Notice it's going to fetch the head, then it's going to uh, start doing uh, changes and adding these revisions, changing, uh, reverting, and doing all of those steps there. Of course, in some cases, it does have to download something from an outside source, so it takes it a minute to uh, retrieve those. And the great thing is you can always read through what all of these changes are by looking at this repo update dot shell script, which is one reason why we had to specify a specific branch because each branch has a different list of changes that it's made. So when we're done, we should get this, all patches applied successfully, which is great. So that means it's done properly. Uh, it is set here at the beginning of this, sh this shell script to say, uh, to close on any E or error. So exit script immediately if a command fails, set dash E. Uh, that's saying that if anything goes wrong, it goes ahead and exits out exactly where it went wrong. So the last thing you see would be the thing that went wrong, and that would be the thing that you would start checking on. Uh, in this case, it completed all of them. Since it made it to the end of the script, they just put in this tagline, all patches applied successfully. So that's great. Now we've applied those and we're ready to start building. So we look at our instructions and we hit next. And now it allows us to choose which device we want. So like normal we could type dot build environment setup dot shell and then we could say lunch. And of course lunch is going to allow us to pick a combo and it's added a lot of combos for us specific to the Sony Open Device project. So in my case I'm building for the Discovery which is going to be the H3213 um, although technically mine is a 3223 but the 3213 covers it as well under the build options so we'll allow that to catch up with us here and then we can choose it. So I believe if this still works the way that it did before we are going to run into an error almost immediately after this build starts. At least hopefully. That way I can show it to you as well as how to um, complete or fix that error as well. kind of taking an unusual amount of time for this. And we see once we choose which one we want, we just make and then the J, the number of CPU threads in your computer, or you can just type make and it will go with the default. We'll minimize this for now. And we can close this repo update shell. And of course this lag is actually not the machine, it's because I'm using uh, VNC to uh, talk to my build machine. So what we have here is H3213 is number 36. Obviously if you're building something for the first time you should probably use an eng build. Um, I've built this before, so we're going to go with number 36 for user debug. And it says it's going to build AOSP H3213 user debug for platform version 10. So this is all set up and ready to go. All we have to do now is type make.
So just like we saw with the Android Open Source Project 10 build, it's going to go through and start collecting all that it needs. It's going to look uh, at all the uh, files and make sure that it has everything lined up in order. It's going to decide which order it's going to build in. It's going to make sure it's included every make file that needs to be and that it finds at least some reference for how to build everything that everything else is requesting. So if you're wondering why this takes a little while, that's actually quite a bit of work to do. And then when it's done, it would provide uh, the list of how many tasks need to be completed, which will be over 100,000 uh, tasks to be done. And like I said, hopefully we will shortly see an error that will come from this. Actually, as a precursor, we can kind of look ahead to see what that error might be. If we go into kernel, Sony MSM 414, It is there, so it will actually not error for us. So previously, since this is the experimental branch, this discovery kernel DTB was not built yet, and you have to come and build it yourself using this build kernel clang shell or the build kernel GCC shell. And I do want to show that, so maybe in the next video I'll just show how we do that anyways, so we can build it ourselves. Actually, I could just go ahead and delete this now, so we'll force it to have the error. Notice that there's only um, six of them, was six of them in here, now five, uh, but there's about 30 phones on that list, so if you're building for one of those other phones, you would definitely run into the error where we should hopefully see in just a moment. So I'll go ahead and pause this and see if uh, we can wait for the error to actually transpire. Okay, and the error I was hoping for did actually transpire now that I've deleted the file that it was looking for. Uh, and it may seem like cheating since I went ahead and purposely deleted it, but like I said, there's about 30 phones on that list, so if you're building for the Sony Open Device Project and your kernel was not in here, then you would have a problem. So uh, I definitely want to show that in action. So here is where this video is going to stop, and I will do another video on how we actually solve this problem because that takes a little bit of time. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you're following along. This is interesting, and uh, if you're interested in working in a Sony Open Device project, it's a really neat project, and I highly recommend it.